Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. Now, there's a long list of very important modifications you can do like to your car. Like fluffy dice, and subs in the boot, Martin. <laughs> and fake caliper things that stick over the top of real calipers. And fake NOS purge systems. Fake gauges not even connected to anything. I saw a guy in a Commodore, he had a clock sitting there. I'm not joking. It was actually a clock. He'd put it in a bracket and stuck it on the pillar so people would think that he had boost. Import it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Important modifications like suspension work. We're going to do some suspension. In fact, we're going to show you how to lower your car. No, not in standard, but in height. And we're working on our Daihatsu show car. Let's lower it, Martin. Let's do it. Let's lower the springs, Martin. Right. Let's have a great time while we do it. Good and let's idea. make a video about Good it. Good idea. We can put on YouTube. This is our 2001 Daihatsu Sior. It started very stock and very broken. We changed the engine, turbocharged it, made a custom body kit and painted it Mighty Mods Green. We installed a set of Recaros, big brakes, intercooler and then went to Japan to get some wheels. We revealed the car at Just Car Insurance Auto Salon 2010. And if you want to check out the build, it's the first three episodes of Mighty Car Mod Season 3. Now we were very happy with the car, but a couple of nine-year-old kids on school holidays wrote in saying the car should be lower. So today, we're going to change the springs. So today we're putting in a set of RSR lowered springs. These are from Japan and they're made specifically for this car. Now these were brought in for us by Import Monster. They were only 150 bucks for a set of four brand new. Now these are progressive springs, meaning you get a lowered car, but you still get ride comfort, unlike really hard springs that are for track use. So let's put them in. All right, I'm here to make you guys a suit, but before I do that, we're just gonna measure where the car currently sits height-wise so we can get a gauge of just how much we've dropped it once we put the springs in. So, the way to do this is measure from directly in the middle of the hub to the guard. So on the passenger side, uh, this is coming in at exactly 38 centimeters. You may find that different corners of the car have different heights. This car was a courier's van and has 280,000 Ks on it. So I wouldn't be surprised if the driver's side actually has uh, dropped a bit more than the passenger side. So once again, measuring from right in the middle and going up to the guard, 37 centimeters. So this side has actually slumped one centimeter. So when we put in the lowered springs, you'll find that the car's gonna sit better all the way around because the springs are new. These are the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a jack and jack stands for safety, a socket set, spanners, spring compressors, a rattle gun makes this really easy, either electric or air is fine, and your lowered springs. Look at it, Martin. It's kind of high though. In fact, I reckon if you can take off your shoe and put it in between your guard and your tyre, your car's too high, unless it's a four-wheel drive. That should be the test that we do from now on, yeah. shouldn't it? The shoe test, for sure. It's how the you do deep dish, it's how you do lowered suspension. Yep, so this from now on is the shoe test. Take off your shoe right now, pause the video, go outside, take off your shoe. If it fits in there, then you need to lower your car. You know what that's called? That's called science. First, jack up the car. Yep, this time you actually have to jack up the car. And don't forget your axle stands. Can Martin take a wheel off within 10 seconds? We're about to find out. Seven point four seconds, Martin. Once you've got your car up on stands, you're ready to start undoing stuff. Now's a good time to check your service manual to make sure you know what kind of suspension your car's got. If your front struts have camber bolts, be sure to mark their position so you can put them back in the same place. Our car has a really basic suspension setup with two bolts holding the strut to the wheel hub and another two holding the strut to the chassis. A rattle gun can make suspension work a breeze. The battery type are also portable and fit into tight spaces easily.
There's one tool you must have when you change springs and that is a set of spring compressors. That takes the tension off the spring, meaning you can take this top hat off without it exploding and killing people. Now it's a good idea to use a spring compressor each side of the coil. Some are under a lot of compression so make sure that the top hat feels loose before you take it off. You'll need a rattle gun or through socket and hex key set up to get the top hats off easily. Don't hold the shock absorber shaft with vice grips, you'll ruin it. This is why you need spring compressors. If you don't have them, look what happens. Now that is a shock and spring with very little tension in it. That can be fatal if you've got one with a lot. Painting things with light so you can see it. Am I in the Archibald prize yet? Martin, you're in the Archer Balls Prize. This is the factory spring that came in the car, and this is the RSR aftermarket spring. Now, if you wanted to change your shocks, now's the time to do it, but us, we're just putting this over the factory shock, so let's do it. Seat the spring in the bottom of the strut and make sure the rubbers are in good enough condition to be used again or replace them. You'll need to compress the new springs, although probably not as much as the factory ones. The strut then goes back into the car. The studs at the top can be quite fragile, so don't force them. Line everything up and then bolt it back together. Check your service manual for torque settings for the bolt. If you use a rattle gun, double check them with spanners and a torque wrench to be sure. Now onto the rear of the car. Suspension doesn't get any simpler than the Daihatsu. Simply undo the lower shock bolt and slot in the new spring and you're all done. Remove the axle stands and drop the car down and then do your lowered car dance. The last thing we had to do was to check and see if our 17s would still fit. It's tight, but they just make it. Hey man. Except for a cruise dude with our mad lowered springs. So low, Martin. So much better with lowered springs. Yeah, it is. Feels like a proper car. So there you have it, it's a simple mod you can do in one afternoon, it makes your car look heaps better and a lot of the time it makes it handle better too. Exactly, now remember when you're lowering your car, it's actually changing your car's centre of balance and drastically affects the way it handles, so make sure you check with a professional first and make sure you use equipment that's designed for your car. Don't heat your springs, don't cut your springs, it ends in tears. That's right, it's a good idea to get a wheel alignment too once you're done. Martin, I need to align my wheel right now.